Welcome to Lecture Online and now we're going to take a closer look at what we mean with apparent magnitude. Apparent magnitude is an, a scale used in astronomy to determine the brightness that stars appear to be from our vantage point on the Earth. Now there may be very dim stars that are really close, very bright stars that are far away, it doesn't matter. It's how bright stars appear to be. And also when we talk about apparent brightness, we're really talking about how bright stars appear to the visual eye, to the eye of a person which means since people can only see visible light, it's based upon the visual portion of the light that comes to us from these stars. Remember, most stars, they emit both uh, UV and infrared as well as visible light, so there's three different kinds of frequencies that we receive from the sun. The total luminosity of a star is the total power output or, in, or output of energy from the star in all three frequencies, in all three wavelengths. But when we talk about the apparent magnitude or the apparent brightness, we're only talking about how bright stars appear from a visual light perspective only. We ignore the UV and the infrared. And so based upon that, we have a scale called the magnitude scale or the apparent magnitude scale, where smaller numbers means brighter and larger numbers means dimmer. And the way the scale works is that for every increase of one magnitude, the star will be either 2.5 times brighter or 2.5 times dimmer than the other star. For example, if we have star A with a magnitude or apparent magnitude of 2 and star B apparent magnitude of 7, since 7 is a bigger number than 2, star B is a dimmer star, or at least it appears dimmer to us, than star A. When we take the difference in the magnitudes, which is 5, and we then use that for the exponent of the number 2.512, 2.512 to the fifth power is 100, which means that star A is 100 times brighter, or at least it appears to us to be 100 times brighter than star B. So therefore we say the apparent brightness of star A is 100 times the apparent brightness of star B. And so it is five magnitudes brighter, or it appears five magnitudes brighter than star B. So what does it all mean? Well, it turns out that we have to somehow set the scale to a certain point where we can kind of reference ourselves. And it turns out that since Vega has an apparent brightness of almost zero magnitude, it's slightly over 0.03 or 0.04, we can say that this is probably a pretty good baseline. So we can say that zero, an apparent magnitude of zero makes it as bright as Vega. So if an object is brighter than Vega, Vega it will have an apparent magnitude less than zero. And if it's not as bright as Vega, at least if it doesn't appear to be as bright as Vega, it will have an apparent magnitude greater than zero. So that's a pretty good baseline. Another way to look at it is we realize that the apparent magnitude of the sun is minus 26.7, somewhere in that neighborhood. So if we go way over here, we go minus 26.7, that's the apparent magnitude of the sun. Now notice, what is the difference in magnitudes? Well, that's 26.7. And if we then take the number 2.512 and raise it to 26.7, so we have 26, oh, that's 2.512 raised to the 26.7, we get a really big number, 4.4 or 4.79 times 10 to the 10th. And if we also realize that the brightness of the sun on the Earth is about 98,000 lumens per square meter, then if you divide this number by the difference in magnitude used as an exponent over here, for example, we take uh, 2.512 and raise it to 26.7 power, we get something like 4.79 times 10 to the 10. If you now divide this number into that, that tells us that an object that has zero magnitude, like Vega, will, will give us a, a brightness measure on the Earth of 98,000 lumens divided by this number. So I'm going to do that. Take the inverse of that and times 98,000 lumens. And I get something like 2.045, ah, roughly about 2.05 times 10 to the minus 6 lumens. Which means that if we have a star like Vega, which has an apparent magnitude of zero, that means the amount of light we get from that star is about 2.05 times 10 to the minus 6 lumens per square meter. That would be the apparent brightness in lumens for a star like Vega. If it's dimmer, it'll be less lumens. If it's brighter, it'll be more lumens. So that's kind of a, a baseline. 
Now, how do we actually measure the apparent brightness of a star? It's not like we kind of look at it and kind of estimate saying, ah, I think that star is about this bright. What we actually do is we take a telescope and we put a filter on it. We have different kinds of filters. For example, we have a U filter, a B filter, or a V filter. There's other filters as well, but these are the three common filters. And the U filter allows UV light to come through and it predominantly allows the 364 nanometer wavelength of UV to come through readily. The blue filter will pass by 442 nanometer light and then the V filter, which allows yellow-green light to come through, about 540 nanometers, allows the same kind of light to come through where the human eye is most sensitive to. So what we do is we take a V filter, put it there, so therefore we allow predominantly the visible light to come through and very little UV or very little infrared to come through, and then we measure the amount of lumens from that particular object, and from that we figure out the apparent brightness. And from the apparent brightness, we can then figure out the apparent magnitude. So that's how we measure the apparent brightness of a star. We use a special filter that allows visible light to pass through, holds back the UV and the infrared, and then we measure how bright it appears with a measure apparatus, and then we convert that to an apparent magnitude. And that's how we find the apparent magnitude of different stars and different objects, such as galaxies or star, star clusters or nebulas and things like that. So that's how we figure out the apparent brightness and the apparent magnitude. And that's what we mean by taking another look at that. Now we have a pretty good understanding where that came from and what it means. And now we can compare that to what we do in the next video. We'll compare it to the absolute magnitude and other things such as that. That's how we do that.